Hey everybody, this is uh, Dr. Jess and Paul Burgess, uh, The Great and Powerful. And this is another installment on our wonderful podcast. And uh, today I'm playing the role of the floating head because I'm wearing a black shirt and I'll just float around for a while while Paul talks. Uh, we're gonna be talking again about belief system and how it affects your internal and external environment. Uh, we were just having a conversation prior to this recording uh, and Paul was putting together, uh, which I always find amazing the way he puts it together, um, how your belief systems uh, gen genuinely affect your life and actually create your life. So I'm just uh, going to let Paul yammer and I'll, I'll go ahead and put in my two cents where it's appropriate. I'll, I'll try and make it short then, so that you don't know <laughs> that we're not still here next week. So, uh, mildly, mildly disconcerting seeing your head floating around on a black screen, but, you know, we'll get around it. The, the, <laughs> I meant to it myself. I was just like, okay. Yeah, right. it, was a, it was a happy accident. So, the um, what we were talking about was I, get, I, I often get asked, what do you do for a living? Like, what do I do? And my explanation of that is I give people the capacity to have a joyful, happy, fulfilling life every day. That's the end goal for all of my patients. And the reason I want that is because I don't see any other outcome that can be more valuable because people just don't have those experiences on a daily basis. And it's insane not to, because we're not here forever. So you've got to make the most of it. But to do that, we have to deal with a lot of things that we keep saying, your beliefs, your internal environment, your external environment, you know, everything that comes around that kind of thing. So the discussion we were having was, we were talking about biohacking and how that's a very um, on vogue kind of term at the moment. And a lot of people are doing biohacks. And I've seen a lot of people do it and it hasn't worked really well for them. And I've certainly had people come to me who are doing huge amounts of morning rituals and stuff. That you know things like um, I don't know cold shower, then hit training, then grounding, journaling, coffee with butter in it. But I don't know some sort of nonsense, right? And then you know I eat at eleven forty two because that's the magic fasting time that needs to be done, and all this kind of stuff. But then they come to me and the hair's falling out, and they've got no libido, and they've got no energy, and they feel really unwell. And you go right, okay what you have to understand is that these things you're doing, they are contributing to your current sy symptoms, to your current problems. They're clearly not working, otherwise you wouldn't be sick. So we have to talk about the beliefs around why you're doing those behaviors, why you're, why you're acting like that. And the problem I see with some people is they spend so much time focusing on the biohack or the thing I need to do. So if you take that, for example, which is a true example, by the way, of somebody who's like, okay, I've got to have a cold shower, and I've got to do the grounding, and I've got to do the hit training, and I've got to do the certain coffee, and then the journaling and all the rest of it. You've just spent hours of your morning completely immersed in this thing, which is giving you, by the way, a result you're not happy about. But whilst you're focused on it, you do not have the capacity to recognize all that life has to give for you in that morning, but all the joy, the fulfillment, the happiness, all of the experiences that life does give you every single second, you don't have the capacity for it because you're focused on when the, oh, I've got to do this journaling now, I've got to do this next thing, this next thing. So you've missed all of that, what life's got to offer. Try doing that for the next 20 years, see how you get on. But you're going to miss huge amounts of value out of life. And I'll keep going on about this stuff for everybody because it's for me, it's so important because we don't know if we've got another day, another 10 days, another thousand days, who knows? But if you are spending all your time focused on other stuff that, that is distracting you from living a good life, that you're happy with, you're relaxed, you're content, you're fulfilled, which is a massive thing people don't have, then it's gone. And I keep trying to get this across to people. And so when I work with patients, very much like you, we deal with their beliefs around their behaviors. We deal with why is it they're always stressed about certain things? How do we turn that around? How do we stop them from continually being almost chasing something that's never going to come about on the premise that at some point in the future, 
at some random date, it's all going to fall into place and be fine. Forget that. Today's the day you've got. Let's make the most of it. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't behave like a complete idiot and be irresponsible because tomorrow's never going to come. That's not the way forward. But sure. if you can make the most of today, then you're just happier and life's better. And it's funny how happy people tend to be healthier. That's yeah, my rant. No, no, that's not, that's not what, what you're saying is absolutely true. But I, um, one thing that I notice about the, the world of biohacking is the term biohacking. When you're hacking something, you're trying to work around something, uh, you're trying to use, um, you know, some kind of methodology to, uh, so you can still do the lifestyle that you've been doing, okay, and get a different result. There's no biohacking, okay? You don't hack anything, okay? You can go and put more stressors on yourself by having to do these individual rituals. Yeah. Uh, some of them, you know, in and of themselves are great, but when you're forced into or you force yourself into uh, some kind of, you know, very rigid um, ritualistic behavior, whether it's diet and, you know, anything else, in and of themselves, they may be good, but put together, it's, it's a heck of a stressor, yeah. okay? And what you're doing is adding on to the stressors that have made you where you are, made you ill where you are right now. And you're working at it from the wrong point of view. Beso and really, biohacking, by whatever na other name you want to call it, is not made for the individual. It's made for this amorphous, generalized public, okay? You're a supreme individual, and your issues are incredibly unique and that's the way it has to be approached it does have to do with your belief system to begin with and yeah. some, some very simple changes that are done one at a time like just getting you to get to sleep correctly or uh, paul and i were uh, talking about a case that he had where you know he told the individual who was a very highly motivated um multitasking stressed individual to, you know, not have any blue light after 6 p.m., meaning, you know, no iPad, no computer, you know, if, if they were going to watch TV, it should be like across the room, maybe with blue block or glasses on, and an hour or two before bed to read a book, not the Kindle, but a book, you know, thing, the thing with paper, yeah, you know, that you have to look at, those, okay? yeah. because that mimics your circadian rhythm the way it's supposed to be, and within a short period of time, uh, this individual was sleeping eight to 10 hours and sleeping well without any biohacking, you know, without taking stuff, without performing, you know, uh, extreme rituals and so forth. Uh, the, the benefit of working with somebody like Paul is they start identifying or help you identify what's really important in your life so you can have an amazing life. And we often, I've just gone through this process myself, to be perfectly honest, to sit down and say, gee, what is it? I know what I love to do. I mean, I love what I do. I mean, I adore it. But for myself, it was like, okay, what is it that I really want in my life? You know, how, how do, what's going to make an amazing, fulfilling day for me so that at the end of the day, when I'm winding down, I have a smile on my face saying, hmm, this was a good day. I did what made me happy. You know, that, of course, for me is service and helping other people. But there's a lot of uh, pitfalls in that. A lot of... Um, Mate, you, but here's the thing. Here's what's, yeah. what's really interesting about that, Jess, is that we've known each other a long time. And historically, you've always wanted to serve and help people. But for a long time, it was driving you crazy. And it was really not making you happy. Right. And that changed. And we got to a point where, actually, yes, it's it's a much, much more fulfilling career and a much more fulfilling day that you're having. Mm -hmm. But one of the things, there's a couple of perspectives that people need to get. Firstly, it's not about just having a good day once in a while. No, it's not just about, oh, I'm doing all this. I sat down today and actually today was a good day. No, no. Every day needs to be an amazing day. Every day, right? Because if it's not, what are you doing that's much more important? I don't get it, right? And the issue with food let's say because a lot of people say no you need to be disciplined if you're not disciplined it means you can just end up doing anything and you're you're not 
you, if you're disciplined, you get more achieved and all this kind of nonsense, right? Of course, being disciplined in a way that allows you to have your best life is important. But when people go on a diet, for example, they're having to potentially monitor and track calories or meals or whatever it is. And there's a big emphasis on, is this the right thing for me to eat? How much should I be eating? Is that too much? Okay, the number on the, the app says I need to have 10 grams less. Oh, oh, I've got to go and do cardio. That's not a happy life. Anywhere in that process. Right. Anywhere. Even when they lose the weight, it's not happy because they're so stressed about getting there, they hit the number they want, and then what happens is nothing belief-wise has changed Right. And then either they need to continue dieting for the rest of their life or they rebound and put all the weight back on. So there's no happiness. There's nowhere. Right. But here's a slightly different scenario. If you work with the right people, Jess, me, whoever, and we show you for you particularly what's best, how to eat and what allows you to get the results you want from a sleep perspective from an energy perspective a libido sex drive perspective from a recovery performance we show you what the best thing to do is and you know actually that's all i need to do i don't need to count calories i don't need to measure this i just need to eat these foods because they're right for me there's a difference because you then feel in control of what you're doing you go okay i know i need to eat this and that now but that's what i'm gonna have today thanks very much and off you get on with your life and start enjoying it Mm -hmm. because you feel like oh i've got that kind of down now i know what i've got to do most people would stress over what to eat oh should i eat this should i eat that what about this oh but it says on that blog that i should be a carnivore and i should never eat a plant or this one says i can only be vegan otherwise i'm gonna get cancer great that's none of that is helpful the other thing is it's very individual right because for me personally um if i'm looking at some of the online information that you're getting, they're going, look, ketogenic diet is really useful. Being in ketosis actually has some very good anti-inflammatory properties. It's good for brain function. It's good for Alzheimer's prevention, da, da, da. And that's all lovely. And I've got a gene for Alzheimer's and I've got a gene for um, diabetes. So ketogenic sounds perfect. But I've also got a gene that says if I take a lot of saturated fat, that's really bad for me. So that means keto doesn't work that well. And if I And I've done it before for extended periods of time and my cholesterol goes through the roof and so hmm, maybe that's not right for me but what works for me is a low carbohydrate mediterranean diet and once i know that and i know kind of what's involved in that i can just eat that kind of food right i don't worry about it it's in control i know what i've got to do i just that's the food thank you it's lovely i eat it it does me the greatest thing my cholesterol is lower than it's been for ages my energy is good my sleep's good all the rest of it great i can get on with my life now Right, and it doesn't mean I can't eat out because there's loads of stuff you can eat out that's right. based around that, mm -hmm. but it isn't restrictive either. And so I'm not fretting every day. Oh my god, what we're going to eat? What we're going to eat? And that's where most people are going with this stuff. Every time you do anything like that, you don't have capacity to enjoy your life, especially diet wise. I, I treat so many people who are on a low histamine diet, low oxalate diet, you know, or another. And when you start adding them together, especially if they look at their genes and say, this is what must be going on. And they change their, their diet. They're first of all, not eating anything of nutrient value Two, they're worrying all day about what they're eating. And if you're doing dieting for weight loss and your concentrations on the number all you're going to do is look at yourself every day and say, I've got to lose weight. 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 You know, and you know, the, you only have a certain amount of bandwidth, just like a computer. Okay. You only have a certain amount of RAM. And if you're going to use all of that RAM all day with all your stressors, there's not going to be enough left to live your life. Exactly. And, and every day, these amazing opportunities, these amazing things come and go and you haven't got your radar on, you haven't got the capacity to see them. Right. And so it all goes, right? Oh, the kids are stressing me out and this and that. Now oh, everything's driving me mad and all the rest of it. And then you sit down and you put the TV on and you go, well, there's nothing on this bloody TV anyway. I don't worry, pay for it. <laughs> nice. the, the, the takeaway points here are 
again, and we've been saying it over and over and over again and trying to give one example after another, the way I handled the COVID and the way Paul uh, uh, treats his patients and the, the successes that we've both had is working with the belief system first and then not using biohacks, but prioritizing what's necessary for you to get back to having the ability to have an amazing life. And sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, a reasonable diet that's specific for you, proper sleep, proper nutrient and, you know, vitamin intake that gives you the ability to run your biochemical processes. Yeah. Nine, nine, 99 times out of 100, that's the place where you need to start. The fact is that if you, if your body, if your physiology, the end result of all this talk is that if you optimize or normalize your physiology, then pathology cannot be there. Okay. Bugs don't like the environment, a normal human environment. They like a nice acidic, sick environment. Yeah. Okay. You make that environment. It's like treating fish. You don't fix the fish. You fix the water. Okay, if the water is the way it's supposed to be, oxygenated, clear, free of toxins, the fish will be healthy. Yeah. Okay, it's the same thing for us. I'm Although, clear. you know, those people out there, other not necessarily other practitioners, but some of the bigger corporations and so forth, throwing all kinds of expensive biohacks at you, are honestly not interested in you getting better because you know, just like big pharma, you know, a cured patient is a lost customer. So think about it. There's no money in health. No, there's there's no money in health. Yeah. And, and the other thing I want to mention again is both of us have uh, a free call that you can make. Ring us, contact us. You can go to my website, paulburgess.uk or to Jess's, drjessarmine.com. And there's a link there. I, I, I think just click it, make the call. But what I want people to understand is if they do that, they will actually speak to me, not a secretary, a student, or somebody else in the office. It's actually me you speak to. And that's really important because I know a lot of people that try and get hold of others, other practitioners, and they and they have to jump through a whole load of hoops before they even get to them. If they I, don't, I don't see that as being useful. And I also, I think we should speak one day about the fact that I think most practitioners can't communicate properly anyway. And so they might be the cleverest people in the world, but until they can get someone to change their actions and take, you know, change their beliefs and take action in the right way, you can be as clever as you like. It's got no value. It's true. Um, it's and true. that I can rant on about for a long time. So I'm going to stop there's now. There's a, you know, there's a couple of things to look at when you're looking for a practitioner. Uh, number one, I, I, we thoroughly, we agree, you and I, <clears throat> and I've always preached that you should be able to interview your practitioner. Yeah. In other words, you should be able to have an opportunity to speak with that practitioner to number one, assess whether they can help you or not. And to frankly, just feel if you feel good with someone, okay, then you're going to work with them. And then you have to ask the question, who are you going to work with? Exactly. Okay. Paul and I are single practitioners, which believe it or not, is a dying breed. <clears throat> if you want a very busy, extensive practice, you can't, you can't do it by yourself. So we accept a smaller practice in order to do, you know, really wonderful work with people because that's, you know, what makes us happy. Yeah. Okay. So if you're going to be working with somebody, if you're going to spend, if you're going to invest a significant amount of um, funds that are, you're going to want to work with the individual who's the expert. And with Paul and I, that's exactly what you do. When you work with me, you work with me. Yeah. And you work with Paul, you work with Paul. That's who you're talking to. So that's who's working on you're not going to be fobbed off to excuse the expression you're not going to be fobbed off to an underline yeah okay. and also you know it's not like you're it's a it's a it's a sporadic thing i'm in your life for a year like right. you'll get sick of me because i want to know what's going on i want the updates we're going to see each other on a regular basis it's not like okay do this and come back in two months time forget yeah. that it does not work i need to know like today i had a call today with a a lady in London asked her to do something and I've diarized in my diary to contact her on Sunday because I want to see what's changed in those few days. It's today's uh, Thursday today. So 
but but that's important to me because it means I can keep on top of what's going on with her. Right. It doesn't mean I'm giving up my family life on a weekend. It doesn't mean I can't do stuff that I want to do. It just means that I need to make a very small commitment because it means that I can get the best for that patient. And that's how it has to work. It can't be done any other way. And we both agree on that, that it can't be done another way. Yep. And that, that's why we have the size practices we do and we spend the amount of time we do with each patient, okay? Because that's what's important. And if we're going to be in your life for six months or a year, mostly a year, then essentially your family. Essentially, yep. we treat you exactly the way we treat our own family. And that, when you're looking for practitioners, are some of the things you should be looking for. <clears throat> Not only do you feel good with that practitioner, are they well-trained? You know, are they experienced in what's going on with you? Do they have the right approach? Do they have a good track record? But who are you going to deal with? Who are you going to be talking with? And are you going to be speaking on a regular basis or is somebody going to toss a treatment plan at you and say, see you in three months? And that never works. It's like going on a trip with a map, no checkpoints, and you get lost and you're up in another country somewhere. Okay. By speaking to somebody on a regular basis, you have different checkpoints. So that if you're going awry or something else is going on, it can be corrected earlier than later. Those are the things you need to look for. So we will talk again next week, guys. Okay. It's a pleasure chatting. Paul, always a pleasure. Take care, mate.